Hey team, welcome back. In this video, we are going to take a look at a couple of the date functions. In particular, we're going to be looking at the get date, which is very, very important to get the end of the month. We're going to be looking at date add. And we are going to be looking at this date time from parts. We're also going to be looking at date from parts. So that's the overview. Well, let's get busy. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to use get date to get today's date. And notice here I'm declaring a variable called today and of type date. And I'm going to print that out. Let's see what happens. Notice that it returns me the year, month, day. Because I'm making that look like a date. And use get date to get yesterday's date. Notice that I'm saying get date and then minus one. And I'm also going to put that into a data type of type date. See how that works. And notice that's yesterday. If this was today, the 10th, yesterday would be one day before that. So it'd be the 9th. Okay, great. So here on line 10, you're seeing that we're casting get date as date. And that'll be kind of like just like this guy up here. And that's today's date. And now I'm going to get today's date and I'm going to subtract 14, which is kind of two weeks. Cool. And here I'm going to subtract a year from the date. And here I'm going to subtract, I'm going to add three years to the date. So I'm going to go to the future. Now we're at a point where we can start learning new things. Notice here that on all these other ones, I haven't used an alias. So the value column name always comes out no column name. And if we write a function to give to someone, we need to be better than that. We always have to give them a column name. So here you can see that I'm going to do that same thing. I'm going to add three years and I'm going to make the column date the future. And the as is optional. Very good. So now our next one that we're going to look at is this EO month to get the end of the month. It gets the last day of the month. And here you can see the basic format of this is EO month, some start date, and then optionally give me a positive or negative integer value. So here you can say get date. You just saw what that did. It gets me today's date. And now I'm saying, hey, get me the end of the month. And notice that it's telling me if we're in today's date is, let's see what this is, is 510. The end of the month is going to be 31, 531. Very good. Now, if I get the month number from get date, they'll just return me five. Here you can see that I'm going to get the date and then I'm going to go back four months. So last day, it's a real long field name. It takes me back four months. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at this next function as part of SQL Server and it's called date add. And date add is a very, very powerful um, uh, function and it has a lot of parts to it. It's called a date parts. And we're going to learn those all in a moment. But here, I want to prove that I can go get the end of month. And then I'm going to add one day to that so I can get the first day of the month. And here, I'm going to go back two months. So I'm going to get the get date, today's date. I'm going to go get the end of the month, two back. And then I'm going to add one day to it for one. 
So the next one that we're going to be looking at is date time. Remember, this is the data type. Date time from parts. Notice that I've included all the year, month, day, hour, minute, second, millisecond. And I'm going to cast that in there so it will be, let's use today's date, 10, 5, and print that in there. And notice that I was able to get that as today's date. And sometimes we just want to do this to get the time. And sometimes we don't have to use all this date time to get that out. We can just say uh, time from parts. One, two, three, four, five. So eight forty one thirteen. And remember, time has seven digits of precision in the milliseconds. So you'll notice now this from parts has date, date time, and time. And here you can see a date from parts. Just now before today's date. Okay, cool. So here you can see that I'm going to get New Year's date. Notice that I've got the get function, get date. And it's going to get me today's date. But I'm going to get the year of that date. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to substitute January and the first, you know, from these guys right here. So the year is going to be dynamic. I'm going to figure that out. And then I'm going to use one and one. Let's see what happens here. In 2021, January the first. And New Year's date. Notice I'm doing the same thing. Not sure why. Oh. Here I use a select statement, and here I'm assigning this date actually to a variable. Okay, cool. So date add, uh, remember I said up here there's a bunch of these different uh, date parts, and these are a list of them. So we can change positive or negative for any one of these parameters on a date. And here are just a few examples. You can see here that year can be defined as either year, YY, or four Ys. Now this is very dangerous because I see a lot of junior programmers use the single Y and it doesn't do this. It's just a, normally a typo but it happens quite often. So notice here, I'm gonna say date add, I wanna increment by one year today's date. So this is next year, let's see what happens. So 2022, that's next year. And the other patterns for year are four Ys and two Ys. But notice you can use all three of these columns, this column, this column, or that column. And notice that if we do all three of these, they all come out with the same date and time. Here, I'm gonna use the negative of that. So I'm gonna go back one year. So this is like previous year. So it's 2021 now, one year ago is 2020. Here's another one that's pretty cool. Date add, day of year one. So whatever today is, add a date to it. So today's the 10th, tomorrow's the 11th. And I see this, when I just look at this right here, I wanna think year. And I'm sure a lot of other programmers do as well, but you have to 
be careful. And uh, year is day of year. So that's a little dangerous. So here you can see that I'm going to get date and I'm going to type that as date time and I'm going to assign it to D2. And then I'm going to cast D2 as a float. See what happens. Notice the value goes back 44,324. And so we can kind of figure out what day that is. I wrote my next line and I said, hey, select date add day, and then I'm going to say the minus of that today's date. See when that goes back to. That goes back to 1900. So we had learned in another video all of the date date time date time two methods i showed you the range so this right here should not be a surprise for you what happened some people might call this the julian date the number of days since some kind of starting period and there you have it team we'll see you on the next video where we'll look at some more of these functions if you have any questions or comments please leave them below and if you found this video informative and it warrants a thumbs up, please click that. And lastly, I'd like for you to support my channel. Please consider subscribing. Thank you, team.